Our headline story, Ghana's electricity challenges. Now blackouts, load sheddings, or doomso have returned to Ghana. Unfortunately, poor electricity supply comes with negative baggage and economic slowdown. How quickly can Ghana resolve this issue? I'm Tolilokwe Adela Rubalogun. Welcome. This is Business Edge. One of the main things that affects economic progress on the African continent is electricity supply. The lack of it has affected and is affecting the continent's economic development. South Africa's ESCOM's inability to satisfy the electricity needs of the manufacturing and mining sectors, coupled with mismanagement, have been blamed for the economic situation the country finds itself. Africa's largest economy is not as productive as it could be, and insufficient electricity supply has a large part to play in this. The epileptic nature of power supply has caused many Nigerians to seek alternatives from the 16 distribution companies in the country. Now, one of the pinnacles of progress on the African continent is having difficulties providing adequate electricity supply. The infamous Domso slogan has returned to Ghana, and this needs urgent attention to prevent the economic slowdown. Such poor services caused in South Africa and in Nigeria. Joining me is financial analyst Benjamin Atul Kwanza, who's joining us from Accra, Ghana now. Benjamin, welcome again to Business Edge. Thank you, as always, for joining us. Thank you for having me again. So there is a bit of history to the Domsor slogan that we see has resurfaced in Ghana. So can you quickly take us through that before we look at the present day challenges? OK, um, in 2014, I think uh, the, there was a period uh, in 2014 where um, uh, power supply was really, really, really bad in Ghana. Um, people could go as long as six to 12 hours a day without electricity for, I mean, very extended periods. And this had very um, dire effects on the economy, on people's individual lives and on, on, the, uh, on the commercial um, aspects of the economy as well. Um, I think the reports at the time indicated that about 2% of the GDP in 2014 was lost due to uh, the erratic power supply at that time. And since then, the problem has been tackled head on. Electricity has been, electricity supply has been fairly stable. And uh, people, I mean, have gotten used to this new way of life. Unfortunately, um, in this year, uh, something like this or something like what happened in 2014 seems to be resurfacing. And I think that that is, that is why we are in the news again. Yeah, so we also know that in early 2019, Ghanaians also experienced another wave of this load shedding as well. And at that point in time, the schedule was not published, as many had said that is the norm, that the schedule would be published so people would be able to prepare uh, for any eventuality that came. So now we fast forward to February 2021. The Institute of Energy Security predicted a complete shutdown in power supply in Ghana following the lack of preparedness by the government to take over the Amari power deal. According to the Institute, although Amari Energy wrote in September 2020 to inform the government of its intention to hand over the plants by the date stated in the contract, the Ghanaian government has not yet carried out the necessary steps to ensure a smooth handing over. So let's go to what the Institute of Energy Security predicted. They said a complete shutdown in power supply. Where do things stand regarding the Amari power plant deal? Um, well, I think that the, the reason why this hasn't, got, this hasn't gone as smoothly as it should is because um, successive governments have handled this. Um, the Amari power deal was handled first by the previous government, and it's now um, the transition is being handled by uh, President Anakufado's government at the moment. And so it's quite typical of uh, governments uh, to sort of drag their feet whenever they are um, handling issues that were started by previous government. And so um, I think that we just have to put aside partisan politics mm -hmm. and look at what is going to help the country as a whole. And that's what the government of today needs to um, focus on. You know, when you bring up the issue of partisan politics and you look at some of the issues happening in Nigeria and South Africa and across the continent as it relates to electricity, 
it is politics that is involved. It is administrations that have to make the decisions concerning enabling environments, whether or not to privatize these electricity sectors and um, different aspects of the value chain. Where does the political establishment stand on what's happening with electricity in Ghana right now? Well, they stand to making sh make sure that the um, problem is solved and it's fixed quickly. Unfortunately, we feel that the government isn't being straight with the populace. Um, for one, for one thing, they claim that um, the Dumso or the erratic power supply is due to routine maintenance works that are going on across the country. But um, in, in in past times, what would have happened was that they would have informed those who would have been affected that between this time and that time, uh, electricity is going to be off or power is going to be off. But what we have seen uh, with the load shedding that is happening this year is that it's not really been that it, it's not really been the case. There have been instances where timetables have been sent and people have been notified. But for most part, even just one day after uh, Ghana celebrated its independence on the 7th of March this year, there was a total blackout across the entire country. Hmm. And so I think that the, the, the government is very committed to making sure that this um, problem is solved, but they are not being really straight with what the um, fundamental problem is. Mm. All right, so we'll get into that a bit after the break, but let's talk about the load shedding that's being experienced. So is this being experienced nationwide? Or are some regions and areas being uh, more particularly affected than others? The, the load shedding is um, pretty evenly spread across the country. And like I said, in recent times, the um, electricity company of Ghana and together with Great Cool, uh, bring out new timetables, which are released from time to time. So um, electricity suppliers have told us that they are undertaking maintenance works in, on some power plants across the country. And so electricity supply is cut off temporarily in whichever area maintenance works are ongoing. Um, so that's where we stand at the moment. It's pretty evenly spread across the country, but it's as and when these supposed maintenance works are ongoing. I, I like the fact that you said suppose maintenance works and we'll get <laughs> into some of the comments, even from the CEO of Gridco as well. But that schedule that we're talking about, how many hours of electricity are people losing sometimes when this, um, when the rolling blackouts, when the load shedding happens? Uh, I think it varies. And um, sometimes it, it's three hours, four hours, five hours. But uh, I don't I don't think I've seen any uh, schedule that uh, that goes beyond six hours. That mm. that takes power out. Uh, that takes power for more than six hours. So it's usually between an hour and six hours. All right. So let's time. talk about the impact this is having on Ghanaians and their businesses. Like many people um, have agreed on the continent, we need electricity to power our small businesses, which then will power our economies. But what impact mm. has this had on Ghanaians who are relying on on electricity to run their businesses? Well, the, the effect, just like you are saying, this uh, I like how you are quite specific, is felt more in uh, areas where there's a lot of commercial activity ongoing. Mm. If you look at the effects of load shedding uh, on businesses in Accra and Kumasi, the two biggest cities in, in Ghana, um, coupled with the increased cost of fuel due to the introduction of deeper petroleum taxes and upward revision of, uh, of some of these taxes as well, Commercial centers are really feeling the toll of this. Um, the effect is that prices are prices of uh, consumer goods, prices of services that are being rendered are going up, and people's salaries or people's disposable incomes are not going up at the same rate. And so people are really, really, really tight at the moment. All right, so Benjamin, we're going to take a break. But when we come back, we'll refer to some statements from the CEO of Gridco, and that is the Ghana Grid Company Limited, which is the power transmission company uh, for Ghana. We'll look at some of the statements he's made. We'll also look at investments in the Ghanaian electricity sector. What are they and can they be the way out? You're watching Business Edge. Do stay with us.
Stay with me on Business Edge is Benjamin Ato Kwanza, financial analyst, joining us from Accra, Ghana. And as we focus on Ghana's electricity challenges in this current time. So, Benjamin, the power transmission company of Ghana, that is the Ghana Grid Company Limited or Gridco, has reiterated that the situation is not about generation challenges, but rather ongoing maintenance and repair works on a number of its equipment and plants. Now, since the beginning of the year, Gridco has made statements giving explanation about six separate power outages. There was March the 3rd, March 7th, March 8th, March uh, the 17th, as well as March 21st on April the 4th. Now, the CEO, Chief Executive Officer Jonathan Amoako Ba, said that Domsar was not back and that it was impossible for such erratic power cuts to return. He primarily attributed the intermittent power disruptions being experienced to a system upgrade and not regular load shedding exercise as many continue to misconstrue. So you said supposed in terms of what the situation is, but really what do you think is the truth of the electricity challenges that Ghana is currently experiencing right now? I think that um, Doomsaw um, could be back. I think that what happened in 2014 and 2009 could be returning. Unfortunately, the government of, um, of today cannot really accept it because of the way uh, they branded and labeled the previous government and the way it's handled. It, it uh, was a major campaign point for this administration in coming in, was it exactly. not? Exactly. Exactly, it was. It was. And so it's difficult for the government of today or, the, or, or President Anado's government to admit that um, the same challenges that President John Draman, Dramani Mahama faced in, in a couple of years back is what they are facing now, yeah. because um, um, you, you can't call you can't call him all those names and then come and face the same challenges and it's it's really difficult for them to admit the truth. So the the problems that um, we face, they could well, it's difficult for me to see specifically what the problems are, but it could be a problem of generation, just like uh, the 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 CEO for the Gridco uh, is saying it is not. But I suspect that that is what could be the case. Let's look at some statements from former power minister, Dr. Donkor. And he said he believes the challenges being faced in the country's power sector are financial and not necessarily due to technical faults as being claimed by Gridco. So let's take a look at that aspect. Does Ghana's government subsidize electricity in Ghana in any form? What investments are being made? Are electricity consumers adequately metered in order to avoid energy theft and also to ensure proper billing? What's the investment? What's the financial um, the financial climate around electricity in Ghana? Like uh, most other utilities and services provided by the government to the populace, um, electricity is is very subsidized. In fact, the government spends billions of dollars each year to try to maintain the cost of power at sustainable levels. Um, apart from that, the government employs um, various tactics that allow those who are able to afford it to pay a little bit for those who um, find it difficult to afford it. Commercial property electricity rates are significantly higher than uh, those of residential properties. There, there's also the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission of Ghana, which plays a very important role in ensuring that public utilities are reasonable and don't pose a significant burden on the populace. They ensure that the, any increment in electricity tariffs or water tariffs are acceptable or are in line with um, salary increments and inflation levels and other things in the country. Apart from that, um, in terms of government ensuring that there are uh, adequate metered connections, the government does try to ensure that everyone um, is on a metered connection, but there also exist so many households that have illegal connections. Mm. In fact, I've seen some with my own eyes in my, <laughs> in my own neighborhood. Mm. Um, according to, to a study, the uh, electricity company of Ghana loses about 1.3 billion CDs each year through illegal um, electricity connections. Um, unfortunately, it's quite saddening that um, some agents of power distributors are complicit in mm. this problem. Mm. They exploit loopholes in the system and assist people even to do these illegal setups and, I mean, for little bribes and things like that. So uh, the government is doing as much as it can. Um, uh, it's 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 really doing as much as it can, but it's I think that the citizens also uh, have a part to play in ensuring that uh, they do what has to be done and that they pay for the services that they are consuming. Mm. 
It's interesting you say government is doing as much as they can and we're still seeing government subsidize electricity. How sustainable is that? We've seen that conversation happening here in Nigeria. We're seeing that sustainable conversation in terms of subsidizing electricity also in South Africa. And people are asking the true cost of this electricity. Are residents, are electricity consumers able to pay it? Especially when you put in the conversation around increases in fuel prices right now. The CDs in their pockets are not increasing in value. But when we talk about this subsidization, how much longer can governments on the continent actually continue this? What do you think? It's difficult to say. I don't think it will be very sustainable because, um, well, we have very limited uh, avenues for generating revenue. Mm. I think that what's important is that government has to look at ways of generating um, electricity for cheaper. And one of such ways is to exploit the gas reserves that we have at the moment. Uh, government is in partnership with certain private institutions, um, their international institutions, to help it to develop its uh, gas projects that will significantly reduce the cost of electricity for people. And once the cost is significantly reduced, then it means that people are going to afford it more and that the subsidies that government uh, would need to uh, uh, put in place to make sure that the burdens of um, utilities on its citizens is reduced greatly. And so these are areas that the government can, can look at and is, is, is actually looking at. But um, challenges with investments in making sure that these things are put in place. That's the development of the gas project, for example, is, uh, is what is really uh, stifling uh, this progress at the moment. And, and it's good we get to this part about investments. Now, we also know that uh, the Akufo Ado administration received over, I believe, 12 billion Ghana CDs in energy sector levy uh, act revenues and almost about uh, 20 billion in, um, in petroleum over the past four years. And that's also revenues coming in. What part did some of these revenues play in investing in the energy sector? Is there an energy master plan that talks about gas, as you talked about, that even puts thermal into play, that puts, of course, solar into play? What's the future of electricity in Ghana? Um, the question you're asking now is the same question that citizens here are asking. What are all the revenues from energy? Uh, what are they being used for? Mm. And the citizenry has been paying um, for these levies and these taxes for, for some time now, but it seems these revenues are being used to solve other problems that the government deems to be more pressing to the detriment of maintaining power generation and distribution infrastructure across the country. It, has, it is what has led us to really to this point, because um, if you look at the priorities of the government, for example, free SHS education, um, senior high school education in the country, um, when the idea, idea came up, the issue of funding also naturally did come up and it has been going on for some time now and uh, government has mentioned certain areas that finance is coming from uh, for which they are using to uh, finance this this really laudable project in fact but um, we feel that some of these priorities of the government is what is drawing funds that would otherwise have been used for what they were designed to be used for mm. and that is why um, uh, the electricity generation infrastructure seems to be suffering and that's why the citizens of Ghana are facing these erratic power supply uh, challenges. So is there any move to liberalize the sector from the Ghanaian government at this point in time? Well, um, at, at the moment, a lot of uh, private um, investors have uh, are in the system, especially when it comes to uh, power generation. There are a lot of uh, uh, private sector players uh, I think that that is a uh, first move and that's a good move. Uh, subsequently, in, maybe in terms of uh, power distribution, uh, government is going to uh, liberalize that a little bit. But at the moment, you're not hearing anything like that. Mm -hmm. All right. So finally, Benjamin, what do we think is going to happen in the near future? So this uh, doom story is on, unfortunately, right now. As you said, sometimes there is a schedule so that Ghanaians can brace up for the load shedding. But sometimes, unfortunately, there isn't. And Ghanaians have been very vocal on social media uh, about this situation. So what are the prospects for a solution sometime in the near future? Or is this a situation that may likely get worse before it gets better? I think I think it's getting better at the moment. Um, if you look at what happened, what was happening a few months ago and compare that to what is happening now, I mean, the situation right now is significantly better than previously. Um, personally, from I think that the last time uh, I experienced uh, my power go off was about 
four or five days ago and was off for 20 minutes. And, and, and I'm not saying that 20 minutes is acceptable. We shouldn't grow to accept that um, if the light goes off for five minutes, it's still good. We should, we, should, we, should, we should get to the point where we can rely on the government's electricity generation capacity mm. fully to the extent that we do not need to look for um, alternatives like uh, generators and those kind of things. And so I think that it's getting better. Government is really, really, really aggressively at tackling this, it's mainly due to uh, the way they labeled the, the, the previous, previous government and the previous president. Mm. Yes. All right, Benjamin Atokwanza, we'll check back in with you as this situation develops. And as you said right now, it seems to be getting better, and we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. Thank you so much for joining us out of Accra, Ghana. Thank you very much for having me, Toto. All right. And before we wrap things up, in we get into NC4 to watch, and unfortunately starting with some inflation numbers. Now, inflation in April 2021 remains stable within the medium-term target band that was set by the Central Bank of Kenya. It recorded a marginal decline of 5.8% from 5.9% in March, driven by lower food inflation and a freeze on fuel price hikes. Nigeria's external reserves lost $350 million in two weeks falling to $34.9 billion on April 29th from a high of $35.25 billion as of April 16th. Figures obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria revealed that the reserves have been fluctuating and that moved from $34.85 billion as of April the 1st before returning to a downward path in the middle of the month. The CBN had recently attributed the improvement in the level of the reserves to the upsurge in crude oil prices on the backdrop a renewed optimism on the successful deployment of COVID-19 vaccines across the globe. Vodacom announced that it had launched 5G technology in three cities across South Africa, Pretoria, Cape Town, and Johannesburg. The Spectrum is Africa's first live 5G network, which supports both mobile and fixed wireless services and is currently available on 20 live 5G sites. And finally, we stay in the southern part of the continent, South Africa's struggling national airline, South African Airways, has exited a local form of bankruptcy protection called Business Rescue after roughly 17 months. The airline was placed under administration in December 2019, and its long-standing financial woes worsened during the COVID-19 pandemic. According to a statement from its administrators, they have filed a notice of substantial implementation of a business rescue plan with South Africa's Companies and Intellectual Property Commission. That's it on this edition of Business Edge. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV and we have options for you to take us wherever you go. Head to our website, follow us on YouTube, subscribe that is, and of course download our mobile app. So we are with you online, offline, and on the ground. Until next time, I'm Sudulapwe Adilaru Balogun.